Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to 3D Hangouts episode 186, Fumi the Fume Extractor. That's right, this week we're gonna be taking a look at Fumi the Fume Extractor. <laughs> we're gonna look at some D20s, uh, we're gonna do some CNC milling. And some drone claw previews. All that more on 3D Hangouts. You guessed it. Let's run the intro. We can get to it. <laughs> What's up everybody, welcome back to another 3D Hangouts. My name is Noel Ruiz, I'm a designer here at Adafruit. Joining me every week is this guy. What's going on everybody, I'm Pedro Ruiz, creative tech here at Adafruit, and every week we come to share 3D printing projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right, this is where we combine 3D printing, DIY electronics, smash them together to make fun googly-eyed projects. Welcome everybody to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's go ahead and jump into the show. This week's Coupon code, well really today's coupon code is PRINTCORE. So if you wanna pick up anything from the Adafruit shop, please do so and use the coupon code PRINTCORE. It'll get you 10% off your order. Page was supposed to say it's good for... Expires at 11.59 p.m. Tonight it works on everything except gift certificates and Adabot subscriptions. That's right, you said it. Let's do some housekeeping stuff. You are of course watching 3D Hangouts. We do the show every Wednesday, live streamed at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Um, thank you everybody for joining us today. We're streaming all over the place. Howdy Facebook, howdy, uh, everybody the other one? Discord. Howdy yeah, we're hanging out on Discord. Everybody on Twitch and of course YouTube. Shout out to Facebook. all our regulars, John K, Jim. What's Sagan, up guys? Good morning Alinsky, everybody. Stuff with Kirby. Thank you all for joining. Yeah. Thank you. 
All right, let's go ahead and jump into the show. Um, let's start off with some deals and things. We got the coupon code, but guess what? We also have freebie stuff. Adafruit.com slash free. Get a full list of all the details and get some free stuff. Check that out. We also have same day delivery for fine folks in New York City. Certain zip codes apply. Check that out. We have newsletters, adafruitdaily.com. That's a daily digest of links, things we think that are fun. Yeah, we got everything Stories. from electronics, biohacking, 3D printing, and one of my favorite business news. Yeah, we have I think a new the 3D printing one is, I think, either the second or third top uh, subscribe to newsletter. Yeah, thank you for subscribing. And the brand new one, Circuit Python, all of the tips and tricks on everything Circuit Python. So make sure to subscribe to that one as well. Yep. Scott and team are doing an excellent job on gathering all the stories for that one. Yeah. Some shout outs. You can see them tonight, I believe. They're in the office yes. today. They're going to be having some very yummy Circuit Python cake for uh, are we celebration to tell people of that? the three. You're going to see it anyway. Yeah, you can see it. <laughs> You'll probably you heard see it here first. You're going to see a, a Circuit Python cake. Mm-hmm. And they'll eat it too. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that's also part of the news. Hey, guess what? We have another newsletter. Adafruit.com slash newsletter. This is a weekly product-focused newsletter. So if you're more interested in just the products, you can uh, get a weekly inbox message about the things you might have missed. So check it out. Hanging out in Discord. We're chilling. People are sleeping or working. We got Madable Kitten Carnival in Azure Skies hanging out in the live broadcast channel on Discord, which mm-hmm. you can join at discord.gg slash Adafruit. Come yeah, that on, was stop nice by and say hello. Yeah. We're always in the room. Just add us. We will pop in. Yeah, and when you're in Discord, you get to see things like this. This is actually where I stole this image from, from Discord. <laughs> so check out Discord. You can get a bunch of free leaks and things like that. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, that's that's uh, MOSFET the cat there. It's tribute to him. Do you want to show the M4 board later? We don't have that. Uh, it's somewhere. Which All right, board? I just train wrecked the show. All right, well, this week's project was a lot of fun, very useful, and been a long time coming. Let me tell you about this thing. So we got this fume extractor. There wasn't a fume extractor before we printed the retainer. But hey, we got this <laughs> we got this desktop fan that's been in the shop for a little bit. And all right, enough. There we, go. <laughs> we got this like nine dollar desktop fan that we got. Look at that. It says when I ordered it. I ordered it in August second of last year. And guess what, Pedro? We needed a quick filler project. <laughs> <laughs> no. You that's... suggested that I model this swanky. Schwenke. filter holder for our desktop fan yeah. so we could turn it into a fume extractor because as it is by itself it, it's not really that good for f- i mean it'll, it'll extract it but it'll shoot it back into the air yeah it doesn't get rid of the fume mm-hmm. so the you've snacks. actually been using it for quite a while now by just adding some gaffers tape on the sides to hold the carbon filter in place right not really good since uh Carbon filter filters have a tendency to have a lot of like the little. They're debris porous. They're porous. They fall it's, out. Yeah, using tape, a gaffer's tape on it wasn't. That was my quick solution, and I did it for many months. Mm-hmm. And uh, we've been meaning to do something. I've been meaning to do something about it. And Pedro, I bugged you en- enough to where you said, "Okay, I'll, I'll make it." Yeah. So you did. So we jump over onto the overhead to take a look. It simply slots in. Has this lovely honeycomb design to keep the filter from getting up too close to the little grill over here. And then it just slides on like that. Yeah. And there you go. There you go. The most impressive thing about this is, of course, all of the overhang that was able to print with all this crazy retraction at a 0.4 millimeter layer height That's using a crazy. 0.8 millimeter nozzle. A print core. No support material on this. And this is, this is quite yes. impressive. This is like a, a torture test for your 3D printer mm. to see its capabilities. Mm. It has a ton of retraction movements. That's yeah. when the, the feeder has to pull the material back out so that it doesn't ooze all over these little, these little grid areas. And they're very, very thin, uh, especially for like a 0.8 nozzle with a 0.4 layer height, as you are saying. Yeah. So it's quite impressive. Uh, the bridging here, there's no support material here. This is just the printer printing in midair going like that because this is printed vertically. If you looked at the time lapse, you'll know that it was printed vertically like that uh, with no support material, just kind of bananas. Um, but if you have a, a, a nice active cooling fan on your 3D printer and you slow it down to about 40 millimeters a second, 
you too can print Fumier. So this should work with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, although it is gonna take you about five hours to print, which was the main reason why I used such a big nozzle. Yeah. It just prints in about an hour, 20, 30 minutes, something like that. Yeah, hour and a half. Mm -hmm. So that's amazing. All right, well, I have a learning guide that talks about the project, a couple things you'll need. Where do you get the carbon filter? If anyone's wondering, I got these off Amazon. We're gonna try to stock these in stock mm -hmm. in the store. It'll take a couple months. Yeah, so. but this is a pretty nice pack. You get a five pack of these. Um, they're 130 uh, millimeters squared and they're about 10 millimeters thick. So that's the sort of a standard thickness. There's other ones and stuff. I try to get the price down since 15 bucks. I believe we paid about $5 for seems like, like 10 pack. Yeah, it like seems like the year. carbon filter costs more than the fan mm -hmm. and it does. So actually one of the main reasons why this is also really good, if you scroll down, we actually have one of these fume extractor fans, the one with the crazy little legs right there but they tend to fall over yeah, so kind of easy. I ha yeah. <laughs> Look at it and it like I don't think we backwards. stock this anymore. I we used say. to stock this? We used to stock it, didn't we? Then where did I we get it? So. Amazon? Uh, just Amazon, yeah. Okay, yeah, these things suck. Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's they take to, a lot of room on It's supposed to suck, too. but not suck at standing up. Right. Which is what they suck at. But yeah. uh, if you go to the overhead, these feature a lovely magnetic magnet on the bottom so you can attach this to a metal surface so it won't fall out yeah and it is of course uh, you can put a 12 uh, volt power supply just plug it into the wall so it has a very nice vortexy suction to get all that fume out of your face oh that's a good question is it PLA yes it is PLA um, just your standard PLA mm -hmm. and John is saying you could probably get filters from the pet shops for the oh, aquariums. That's a good idea. Carbon must huh. be hard to find. <laughs> it's like the most huh. abundant material in the universe. <laughs> you can get a free pack for $7 from DigiKey. Part Sweet. number, there's part number. Sweet. Thanks, Kirby. We're going to send those off to Stella. Let's see if she's yeah. not Stella. Um, Mary. Mary, yeah, she's our stocking stalker. Mm. Our stocking stuffer. All right, well, let's go, go back to the website. You can you know, source your own carbon filters until we get some in the shop. Yeah, you're probably you going to need to cut those up anyway, so. Right, yeah, I use a pair of scissors. Um, makes a lot of particles, so mm -hmm. be aware of that. Power supply, we have these nice power supplies in the shop, which so actually, if you take a look at the uh, video for when these were released, I think Lamar was actually using a six volt. Uh, nine supply. volt. Oh, nine, nine volt, volt. yeah. Okay. It works fine. So nine to, nine, 12 nine to 12 volt. Nine to 12. We also have, um, in the product page, it also says you can use one of these things that I think are pretty cool. This is a 12 volt USB booster cable. Did you hear about this, Pedro? Look at that. Plugs into a regular USB, five volt, turns it up to 12. Isn't that cool? Very handy. All the circuitry is in that little box there. Mm -hmm. Does it have a switch on it too? I believe it does. Maybe, maybe it doesn't. But it doesn't need one because um, the fan has a really nice switch on it. Mm -hmm. On the side here, There's you see that switch. switch yep. Your standard 2.1 barrel jack. So um, I'm sure you can use a, a power supply you're not using to power it. I don't like the batteries because I don't have to worry about the, the thing dying. That's actually one of the biggest things that sucks. Yeah, it sucks about, about sucking. sucking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Quickly jump over the overhead. Can't skip over this without shouting out Phil B's very tiny, super effective little tiny solder and sucker fan for on the go. One of our little favorite ones here because you are able to get into small little places and it's portable. It has a, I believe a 500 milliamp hour battery inside there. And we, yes. the fan, we also, the little tiny fan we also stock as well. Rechargeable battery. It's yeah. fun if you want and a need boost. a little tiny one for on the go for next con or whatever, you need to re-solder some things. Definitely check out Phil B's guide on this excellent teeny tiny little one. Yep, it's on the Adafruit Learning System. We also have another one as well. This one's from Jan, a motion activated fume extractor with the lamp. So if you want to go really super DIY, print the enclosure, print the circuitry, print the circuit, um, solder up some stuff. This, you know, you have just some options. So we have a couple of fume extractors to choose from. So that's cool. Jump back over to the guide. Uh, I really want to talk about the printing because the printing is kind of amazing. I did not believe this was going to work. Especially Me with all that retraction. 
It thought you were didn't. crazy at first. Like, oh, there yeah, goes Pedro yeah. wasting plastic again. <laughs> no, man, this is a great test. I didn't know you could do this. So let's talk about some of the things, right? So uh, the, you, would you say the design, you kind of optimized it for printing with a big nozzle? At first, I did not. Oh. Uh, so before I started adding the honeycomb grill on that, it was taking about, about an hour uh, by itself. Uh, as soon as I added that in, you actually do need that. Otherwise, it's not. It's gonna feel flimsy. It'll flop out. Yeah. It'll flop around. But once I added that, I did inc it dramatically increased the print time on that. So I switched over to using a 0.8 nozzle, and I had to adjust the tolerances to fit that. So, of course, sketch-driven design. So you are able to edit all of the sizes for that, as well as the um, the thickness of the wall. Yeah, so if you have a, a shell that you want to increase. Mm -hmm. So for whatever reason, if your slicer is uh, messing with the tool paths, uh, you can adjust for how thick your shell is going to be until you get a perfect tool path for that. So cool. you do have the ability to do that. Uh, okay. But it helped very uh, well in this case because I did have to adjust the uh, tolerances to fit the 0.8 millimeter nozzle. Okay, one of the, th the things about the, the Ultimaker 3, which has like, become our favorite printer now, is that it has swappable print cores. Print core is like an all-in-one design, so it has the heat bright, the heat block, the heat break, the nozzle, and some sensors all built into this one little design, mm -hmm. and that's pretty cool. So it makes it easy to change out nozzles because you don't actually have to sit there, heat it up, uh, clean it out, and then actually screw the nozzle on. That's what we're kind of used to. The Ultimaker 2 Pluses come with a kit, mm -hmm. right, where you can change out the nozzles, and you know we've grown accustomed to doing that, but being able to swap it out in like a couple seconds is is pretty awesome. Uh, it also reduces some of the maintenance time, so you don't have to tremendously. Yeah, you don't have to worry about um, nozzles hot nozzles burning your finger and falling onto the glass because that has happened before. Very scary. Yeah. So uh, shout out to the Ultimaker team for making the Ultimaker three. It's really cool, and uh, we use the print core nozzle. But if you have sort of a uh, another printer, of course, there's 0.8 nozzles for all the printers, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So let's talk about slicing the part. We use Cura to slice this part. And one of the things uh, you'll notice is bed adhesion is like super important. So one of our tips is to just use a really wide brim. Mm -hmm. So we use this really wide brim. Um, that's a sort of this thing that this uh, thing that goes on the perimeter on the first layer, and that's what keeps the whole thing down. So uh, we use that. Uh, let's talk about some of the slice settings. So since we are using a 0.8 nozzle, this means you can use a bigger layer height. Typically with a 0.4 nozzle, that's half the size, right? That's half the diameter. You normally do half of that uh, layer height. So it's a 0.2 layer height is what you're kind of used to. Well, with a 0.4, with a 0.8, you can do 0.4 layer height. So that dramatically um, reduces the print time. Another thing you want to be aware of is the line width. So how much plastic is actually getting pushed out of the nozzle. Um, so if you measure it, you can see that you can go up to 0 0.75 millimeters. That's, that's uh, a little bit smaller than the 0.8, but definitely more materials coming out of that nozzle. Another thing you want to be aware of when you are printing with so much material coming out, you want to slow it down because if you go too fast, um, you will under extrude your features when you're printing. So you want to slow it down, you want to have a big layer height, and you want to have a thicker extrusion line width. So another thing that we found is retraction, right? So retraction is when the printer has to retract the material from the feeder so that it doesn't ooze when it goes to and prints the next feature. What we found is by default, there's something called a retraction count. By default, it's 25, mm -hmm. right? Which is far too much. It was getting fails right near the top where it does a bunch of the bridging and uh, it's just been grounded up because of all the retraction. So we had to lower that down to around 10. It yes. was a very good uh, result without having it. I never even knew that. Losing. The yeah. setting existed. The mm -hmm. retraction count. I've heard about the retraction distance, the retraction speed, but never the count. So you can limit that count to just 10 so that the printer isn't retracting all the in time. Mm -hmm. So that will definitely help. Uh, Without that, I think the print would just completely fail all the time. Yeah, yeah, so it failed true? twice Tw uh, that way. Yeah. So what did you, how did you know? How did you find out about the retraction count? Uh, just looking around through all the settings, really, just digging okay. through there. It is one of the features that you do have to enable. Uh, it is hidden by default. So if you go into the cog wheel inside of uh, let's do that right now. Cura, you can see where that is. It's right underneath, I believe, material. 
Is that right? That's right. It's under material down here. There's a little cog wheel. Click on that. And you you want to turn on your retraction uh, um, retraction, distance, yeah. retraction speed is on, retraction minimum travel, retraction count, maximum retraction count. So you want to check that. And you'll see that right here. <clears throat> you'll see that I have 25, Pedro. That's because that's the default. Mm -hmm. It's 25. That's too much. So for this part, put 10. There you go. And then you can see here uh, the print time is an hour 49. Okay. I probably have something else that's. Uh, Contribute to it. Oh yeah, yeah, the speed, it's at 35. If I crank that up to 45, you'll probably get down more to an hour 36. Look at there that. You, go. you actually got it to an hour 27 on your machine. I think it's because you're using the, the new beta. Mine still isn't open. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it might be that. Could be a couple of the things. Could be the, uh, the initial yeah, the print speed. Oh yeah, so 20 here, you can probably speed that up to 30. That's the very first layer that's printed. Usually it goes slower to allow the adhesion to kind of help. But it doesn't need to be 20, it can be like 30. Now it's at 134. So you see these tiny little things. If you want, if you want to print speed, you can spend all day uh, playing with that. But that's pretty much all the things we changed here. It's not too much. You'll get a little warning here, a little orange under the layer height. I think it's telling me, hey, that's a little bit too extreme. But surprisingly, it ended up working. Which yeah, I was in it should. <laughs> I think go Whoa. be able to go up to 0.6, I believe, for the layer height. That's crazy. So there's a little bit of look at the Cura stuff. Um, and of course, in the learning guide on this page, you can see all of the settings here. I also did a screenshot of um, all the things as well. There are some different things here, like wall speeds, outer wall speeds. They're a little bit different, um, but you can follow these uh, if you have the same setup. So here's what the print looks like. There's a little bit of sag here, you can see, because that's just a huge it's like a hundred millimeter distance, mm -hmm. um, travel distance for, for the bridging. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, having a good active cooling fan. It's nothing that affects the actual part though, for sliding it in and having no, it, it hold the carbon filter in place. Yeah. So it definitely, uh, a trade off between using all that support material, you know, it's just going to hold up, you know, two, uh, layers of that. So definitely not worth adding support material for that. Uh, Especially for laying it That'd be a lot vertically of up. You were actually suggesting that I print it flat, flat on the bed. But I was like, nah, it's fine. Yeah, it's it too is. many supports. So let me try this out. Yeah, it, it worked out vertically. Well. Yep, so we have the Fusion 360 file. If you guys want to download it and remix it or whatever, we have that. We also have the STLs as well. Um, and I always, I'm starting to link to all the Adafruit CAD parts. There weren't any in here, but hey, I figured I'd just have that link there for all of them. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's pretty much for the printing part. As far as the assembly goes, we got these GIFs. Very, very easy. You want to use a pair of scissors to cut the thing down to size, being ca uh, cautious of not printing, not cutting too too short mm -hmm. or leaving it too long. Yeah, I left the, 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 the I guess like the thickness or the wall um, pretty loose, so you should be able to yeah. Uh, add the filter on there without having to squeeze it in and having those particles fly everywhere. Right. Should be good on that. But if you do need to adjust that, you can, of course, go into the Fusion file for that and increase uh, the, the, the distance between the walls to allow the filter to uh, right. get in a little bit more easier if you do end up getting a thicker uh, carbon filter for that. That's right. So, and of course, googly eyes make everything better. Yeah. Ah. That's fun. We need to add googly eyes here now, smaller ones. Yeah. Yeah, so take it apart. Let's take a look. You can take out the filter if you turn it upside down. I think the filter would kind of slide out. No, you know how to do that. You just turn I it upside down. I just don't want particles going everywhere. No. Yeah, yeah, see. I, yeah, well. So, a um, good way to talk about a nice little feature on there that the little floor here that should catch right. a lot of that. So you don't have it going all over your desk, but yeah, comes right out like that. Mm -hmm. Just cut that down to size and slides right in. Mm hmm. Nice. So you do have uh, different choices of the grill design. Uh, if you go into, do you want to go into the CAD for this? I got a layer by layer for making the mesh. Ah, okay. Um, but yeah, you do have an option to, we have two different STLs, mm -hmm. one with the grill and one, well, it's the mesh, one with the mesh and one without it in case you don't want it. Um, yeah, it's basically uh, the front is also back here as well. So it does keep it in there. So that's how that works. You can see how these uh, these features here clip onto the hood of the fan. So that's how those those uh, 
this geometries look like. Yeah. Cool. Super cool. All right. We got some particles to clean up. Now, yeah. if only the fume extractor could suck up the particles. <laughs> <laughs> that's how that clips in. Nice and locks. Okay. Oh, cool. And somebody was saying that to add a tripod adapter so you can like oh, have this should, yeah. bendable. I so wanted to do this for this a long time ago, but mm -hmm. I never got around to it. Yeah, this should have enough, uh, should be able to add it just to this part right here. I think so. You can attach that to one of those uh, bendable arms and have this like over top you. Yeah. It's a lot more easier if you have I like desk space. Yeah, the, the desk space is a big thing, especially when I'm shooting, um, doing photography for the guides. Mm -hmm. I don't want something like in front of the shot, so mm -hmm. um, it has a decent suction, as you saw in the video. Right, cool. Damage. That is this week's project. I think that's about all uh, we can talk about. Yeah, how much can we stretch this project for? Oh, I got something. How about a layer by layer on how to create the mesh? So I spent like, I, I don't want to lie, I spent like an hour figuring out how to make this honeycomb pattern, and I was like, why is this, why is this taking so, so long? So I just used, uh, not the inscribe, I used, what's the other uh, name? Yeah, what, we're going to talk about it. I just wanted to say like, it, it, it looks really easy, but that's because I figured out all the hard stuff. <laughs> and maybe I'm not that knowledgeable in making patterns, but hey, here's a quick tutorial on how to create a honeycomb pattern in Fusion 360. So let's take a look. So the honeycomb pattern is actually a little bit different than what you just saw. This one is rotated in a way where the features don't have that much overhang. So I just basically rotated uh, the polygon, the six-sided polygon, uh, so that it has that um, sort of 45 degree, 60 degree angle instead of just this flat feature. So what I did is I started by um, making a sketch on any of these planes. And you have two different polygon tools. I like to use the circumscribed one. Uh, this has more of a sort of an edge to edge diameter. So you can uh, add how many, wh what the diameter is and you can tell how many sides you want. And you can use the tab button to lock that dimension in. And then what I did was double click on the edge to, to select the whole object. And then using a rectangular pattern, you can start patternizing it. But the thing I found is that you kind of want to make a cluster of this. So instead of making like a whole bunch, I start with just two for the quantity. Then I need to create some sort of reference point so that I can create uh, a 60 degree uh, line that I can use as the direction for creating another pattern. So with that created, I can select the rectangle pattern and then using the direction select, select that line that we just made that's at a 60 degree angle and then push that out so that the, so that the, the polygon shape can shoot off at a 60 degree angle. Um, using the same distance of 14 millimeters, you can get this consistent thickness. So now you have three. So then you take that and then apply yet another pattern on top of that. Um, profile. Uh, again, using the same numbers, 14 for the distance and two for the quantity. Now that we have four, we can do a marquee selection on those four and then apply another rectangular pattern. This is where you can start making uh, the main pattern. So you want to use a 28 millimeter distance, but that'll change depending on your actual diameter. And then you can drag it down and make even more of a quantity. So you kind of create this big cluster of, of uh, hexagons. Uh, and you'll notice you can have some extra things. You can hold down the shift key to deselect any of the want unwanted reference points, like those lines that we used. Uh, and that's kind of it. So you can, um, you can quickly make this, uh, this sort of honeycomb thing instead of, uh, and then you can use a two point rectangle to kind of encapsulate all of them. And then you can just select one profile extrude that out, make it as thick as you want, and now you have a nice grill, honeycomb patterned grill mesh thing. Uh, and you know, you can do a lot of different things with this. You could add user parameters to drive it with uh, parameters. So you can quickly make it, uh, you can adjust the size if you wanted to that way. Um, but we didn't do that here, but that's that could definitely be a thing we can do. So that's how to make a, a grill in like three minutes. Of course, this has implications for adding your company logo or whatnot, branding on that. Uh, sure. Very easy to do to the front there. Nice thing to do. Are any Fusion 360 power users in the house? I could have sworn there was a plugin to make grills and fans. I couldn't find it on the Fusion 360 app store. I spent like 
10 minutes looking for it. Did they pull it or something? But because I was like, this is taking way too long. I was like, there's a, there's got to be a tool that somebody programmed to make this a lot easier. I think you're thinking of the Veronoi generator. That's what I thought. But yeah, I, I remember watching a video and someone was like, oh yeah, this is a third party Fusion mm. 360. Anyway, that's how to make it manually. Yes, like John Kay says, you can build any shape, triangle, circle, yeah. etc. Yeah, it's, it really comes down, the, the trick for me was getting that reference point, that reference line to go at a 60 degree angle. Because that's how the hexagons work. They're all, mm -hmm. All the faces are at a 60 degree angle. So when you use that, you get this perfect, uh, you can fit these, these honeycombs in the right spot to make this lovely pattern. Make it nice and compact, yeah? Yeah, nice and compact. Cool, well there you go. There's a little bit of CAD tips there. Um, that was fun. We ready for shop talk? Yeah, moving on to this week's, what are we prototyping? Oh, what are we prototyping? That's right, I always forget, what are we prototyping? So this week's project was supposed to be this Impossible D20 which we showed off, I think, last week. And I made a smaller one. And then we were like, you know what? We can make this even better. We can e put even more things in it. Like, you guys heard of like a turducken, right? Turducken? Like turkey inside of a duck. I think it's Inception. Or chicken or whatever. So we went ahead and added yet another D20 inside of that, inside of a dodecahedron. Yeah, so wow. it's a D20 inside of a cosahedron inside of a dodecahedron. Mm -hmm. So this is really showcasing the power of the small extruder and of course PVA to get this to print in the air without having any like support materials that are gonna ruin the, crazy. the part inside there. Uh, got some really good slow motion video. This will be next week, actually talking about the procedures we were using, uh, like a sonic, um, ultrasonic bath to get all of the PVA quickly out of there. Yeah, some nice so. Some techniques for that. Yeah. Um, PVA better. supports is very, very cool. You can create some crazy geometries that you didn't think would be possible. Here's a quick look of what that looks like. So this white stuff here is dissolvable. This is basically glue, mm -hmm. right? Like Elmer's glue in filament form. Yeah. And you put that in water and it dissolves. It takes a lot of time, but hey, we got some tricks and stuff that we're looking at. So well, we're experimenting that with that. Next week. Yeah. So cool. Another cool thing we've been working on is this Circuit Playground Express powered claw. This was uh, PT's idea with that um, Instagram ad that I'm sure everybody's seen or on Facebook where that little claw thing so you just bring your phone close to it, it has a little sensor on it and it'll close and we were thinking how could we do this like AT wise uh, you know having an assistive tech claw that you can like attach to your uh, wheelchair or something like that but then I started messing with some make code to see if I can get the light sensor to work it turned out really good if you guys aren't familiar with MakeCode, they have a really awesome web, uh, what is it, web? Web USB. Web USB, yeah, so you so can actually have your code offloaded right directly into the, to the Circuit Playground Express without having to download or drag and drop anything into the actual. Uh, yeah, so this is programming USB in a web this. browser with block-based code. Yeah. It's like little bits for coding, mm -hmm. so check out Make. So I got is a little it, video here, yeah. super simple. I can share the file now because it looks like, uh, looking over at the Hootsuite, it looks like one of the teachers are having trouble actually getting servos to work. So I'm gonna send that out, send the code out. Super easy, it just senses the light and it just closes. So what this got me thinking was, hey, the DJI Mavic Pro actually has the ability to turn on the front LEDs with the customizable control on the remote there. So I've been wanting to do a drone claw for quite some time now, and this is definitely going to be the way that I do it. So good. Uh, we took PET, which acts as a, um, a light pipe, a light pipe, and I was able to get the values down <laughs> so we could actually control that through the uh, controller. A lot of people in the DJI forums buy this gnarly like hunk brick. of like yeah brick, like all these wires hanging out all over like their uh, Phantom. Uh, Okay. Uh, drones to get a claw to work. Outside. This is like so elegant in the way that we can get this. And to make it even smaller, if you jump over to the overhead, Noed did a nice uh, breadboard the compatible. Um, yeah, dude. 
This is uh, PCB. Uh, shout yes. out to Davis Tells who mm -hmm. came up with this idea of making a, a breadboard adapter for the Circuit Player and Express. So this is a, a CNC milled PCB that we put together on our other mill, Banton Tools CNC. Uh, and we got a little video here that we can we can show you guys. That shows you some of the process. I'll probably be doing a, a project based on this. Um, but yeah, it's really cool. Uh, before we move on to that, I want to shout out the Make Code website. Um, so if you got yourself a circuit player on Express, or you want to teach some young kids or some, some people how to do some simple programming without syntax, you can check out the website. And this bootloader is special. So let's go to the, the learning guide for that. So if we go over here, over here, over here, over here, here it is. All right, so here's a, um, the bootloader for Circuit Player and Express. This enables you to use USB web uploading. So that means you plug in USB to your computer and then you can upload code from the Make Code website. Uh, and this guide here is, or this link rather, is a part of the Adafruit Circuit Playground Express guide. So you can do many things. You can do Make Code, it's you can do Circuit Python, you can do Arduino. This is like Adafruit's flagship product in all the sensors know. you need on there. Originally, I wanted to do this with Trinket, but then when you add that and then start adding all the other components needed, it doesn't make any sense. Um, even with the sort of funky, you know, form factor of the Circuit Playground Express, I can work around with it since it is going to be modeled into the back la landing gear uh, legs yeah. on the drone, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, but continue. This is such a powerful tool for prototyping your idea. You don't have to spend all these. Uh, all this I time and not. experience learning C or, or learning Arduino yeah. or learning Python because mm -hmm. you, you literally have these blocks, these visual blocks you Drag of and drop them. It has the nice tool tips when you drag over each thing. It tells right. you how to do that. So I stumbled my way across. You literally like, so what is this? this oh, I want yeah. a servo. Oh, I want mm -hmm. it to be on on brightness, turn the, you know, on this light sensor. And a big sensor. deal to talk about is I am not a coder. I am a designer. I'm a video yeah, I did. animation <laughs> guy. I don't, I but cannot that process, you, right? like the only thing I could do was like when we were doing web development, I could do like CSS and HTML, right. which is not, Front it's markup, you yeah. know, it's not coding. So this is in a way kind of like the markup stuff. Yeah. So this sort is a absolutely uh, Game was critical for me try, even getting this far because, you know, I can ask for help, you know, at, at Adafruit, but they're all busy doing other stuff that I don't want to bother them with. Right. So no, this is what it's for. This is what Make Code is for for, mm -hmm. for folks like us who, yeah, yeah. who want to, who are designers that just want to get this kind of concept ironed out. So it's really cool. Check it out. MakeCode.adafruit.com, or you can check out the guide. Again, to do web USB, you have to use this uh, this updated bootloader, which I have linked Scroll already in the down. guide. Uh, post this in the. Um, the chat rooms too. Yeah, sure, I can. Here's the actual is, link. This is what you. It's need in the description, but I'm gonna post it in the YouTube, Facebook, post it or the, the Facebook. Link. It's a pretty long link. And I already posted my project. If you want to get the servo up and running, you can go ahead and just change uh, values it. and what um, if you want the light to work or if you want buttons. The buttons work really good as well. Cool. John Airbnb. John K is saying this is he, he loves using Make Code too for uh, rad. rad. Rapid application development. That is a, That's awesome. That is a rad. Uh, yeah. Um, what is it? It's rad. <laughs> rapid. <laughs> rapid app development. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So, yeah, check that out. Aleski is saying that uh, you can use it with Trinket too. Yeah, I think with the same wow. D chipset, mm. you could probably use MakeCode. I think for now, like, it's we have full support for the Circuit Player and Expect. Nice. Um, I guess sure. other boards are coming as well. Yeah. I should have plugged that in. Uh, it's all right. We got a video on it. it. All right, so let's talk about the milling yeah, we'll real quick. Too. So oh, yeah, yeah, go over the milling. Yeah, I'm going to do some milling stuff. So let's jump into the, the memory bubble. Here's the memory bubble. Here's my memory of milling out. So I got these double-sided PCBs. FR1, it's paper fenicle. Paper phenolic. Phenolic. Uh, and the way that the other mill uh, does double-sided is it has this alignment bracket. And with this alignment bracket, it allows the tool head to probe where it is, where that bracket is, and then it <clears throat> generates offsets depending on uh, where precisely that uh, the bracket is aligned. So it's held with these screws. And then what you do is you need, uh, the other mill software is really what's super powerful about owning a, a, another mill. So what you do is you flip the tool over so that the blunt side is, is, is basically turned into a probe. 
And what it'll do is it'll sense the edges. It'll, it'll kind of probe several different edges and figures out where it is, where the bracket is relative to the bed. So this is how it's able to do precise double-sided milling. And the tool that I'm using to mill is a 132 inch flat end mill. This is my favorite type of uh, tool to use. Uh, I'm a big fan of just using one tool to do all of the work. That way you don't have to kind of change out the tool every, every so often. And again, the Bantam tool software is so legit and it, it makes the workflow incredibly easy. You don't have to do feeds and speeds and all this other stuff that I'm used to uh, milling like wood and other different objects because it's just natively supports uh, Eagle uh, and Gerber files. So that's really cool. So I'm cleaning the bed here with my with alcohol because it tends to be a little bit dusty. Um, but the spoil board is made out of aluminum. It's, it's already flattened and, and faced for you. And this is the the um, the paper fen fenacle? phenolic phenolic paper phenolic. It's getting a little bit rusty, so I, I kind of wiped it down with some alcohol. Um, so you want to? I probably want to throw some air desiccants in that bag at some point because it tends to oxidize. I'm just using regular double stick tape to secure it to the aluminum spoil board. Um, you don't want to double up on it in terms. You don't want to like overlap the tape, so just make it nice and flat. The other mill software again, it just kind of knows the thickness of the tape so it offsets it for you um, already which is awesome uh, and then you want to align it to the left or the right depending on if you're doing the top or the bottom layer so i'm doing the top layer right now so that's aligned to the far left lower corner uh, of course the other mill is um, enclosed so dust isn't flying all over the place um, again the software awesome i actually import the eagle file yeah, you just drop in the eagle file, eagle file and just tell it where you want it. When you're doing a double-sided PCB, you kind of want to just do the, the traces first and then save the outline and the drilling holes for the very end, so when you flip it over. This took like three minutes to etch, probably even less than that. Probably like two and a half minutes. Look at how you like that. Three minutes. Yeah, that's crazy. It takes... A week That's real time. It's two? not a time lapse. Yeah, this takes a, a week or two if the custom order something from Oshkark. Yeah. Get it in and go, oh no, yeah. I forgot about this trace. Yeah. Or, oh no, I have to. So, so when you flip it back, then you can turn on the outline and the holes. Um, that's what's so cool about the Bantam tool software is you tell it with a click of a button, do you want to do the outlines, the, the trace, or just the holes. Uh, so popping it off the bed, I like using alcohol to loosen up the adhesive. And that way you can you can just peel it off very easy because the adhesive, the adhesive just kind of dissipates with the alcohol. Um, now I definitely recommend using a brand new tool. I like using my tools till they break, and that's a bad thing because you get these burrs. So what I ended up having to do is spend a little bit of time um, using a Scotch Brite pad to smooth out the surface because I have to flip this board over, so it has to be super flat, so I can't have any of those burrs. Um, and if I had just used a new tool, I wouldn't have had done that. Uh, so you put the tape over your freshly milled design, which is which seems a little bit weird, but you do that because you're doing double sided. And um, out, yeah. yeah, I, I tend to even out the, the, the tape a little bit um, instead of grouping it up so close so that so that my spatula can get underneath it. There's a lot of cleaning involved. Um, there's uh, some new dust collection systems that they came out with. Um, I haven't have that yet, but um, does it's it, available. It is available, yeah. It's funny, it's like it takes longer to clean the bed than it does to mill it. <laughs> so now that we're uh, flipped over, aligned to the right side of the, of the spoil bed, we can, we can do the, uh, the traces, the outline, and the holes. Uh, so that'll punch all the way through. Again, this is the second side, this is the bottom side of the PCB. Again, it takes like two or three minutes, probably about three or four minutes now that we're actually doing the outline. Um, and again, this is all being done with just one tool. Normally, when I first started milling on the Bantam tools, I would, I would use like three tools. Yeah. Because uh, my traces were super thin, I didn't know, you know, how to optimize my traces. So I'm using really thick traces, like 36 mil traces. Whoa. It can do six mil. I'm doing 36 mil because why not? It, I want these thick, chunky um, traces, especially for the thing we're doing with the big pads mm -hmm. on the. It's gonna be used for doing like a conductive. Uh, yeah, touch. conductive touch or a con uh, capacitive, capacitive touch. touch yeah. Conductive touch. Yeah. Again, a lot of dust, but you know, clean it up. It's, I always have a, a vacuum handy. Uh, and again, order a new filter for yeah. I need to remember that. Uh, more alcohol to loosen up the, 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 this double stick tape because that, that keeps it nice and flat, secured to the bed. One of the things I noticed is that 
the holes don't punch all the way through and that's because it's accommodating for the tape and you actually don't want to go any deeper and cutting into the tape because that can reduce the, the, it can dole out your, your end mill. Mm -hmm. um, but you just use a, a, a some needle, like a, a sharp needle to just kind of poke through the whole side. But there it is, it's double sided now. It isn't, um, and, there, and there it is, I'm test, test fitting it with the circuit Playground Express using these M3 screws and washers. Um, so you did get upgraded screws so that they fit they did, uh, not yeah. so long not on so there. Long. Yeah, they did um, some, uh, continuity testing yeah. on our multimeter to make sure that the pads are actually uh, making conductivity and that they're solid. Um, using some headers here, you always want to be careful with headers because when you clip them and you don't hold them, they might fly away across the room just like that. Yeah, that was fun. So this is perfect for adding onto a breadboard or for me adding to yeah. jumper cables. So yeah. quickly so here's the funny this. thing though. Um, this is, this isn't first try. This is the third try. It mm -hmm. took three different iterations because I didn't do my math. I didn't look for the tech oh, drawings of a breadboard. Good. You know how the, the center of the breadboard is actually segmented into two halves? Mm -hmm. um, I, didn't, I didn't get the distance right, so I had to do it three times. I was like, but the, hey, it took like Again, 10 minutes. highlighting that if we sent this off Rapid, yeah. Ash Park, you'd get it back and be like, I just wasted 20 bucks, yeah. or 30 bucks. Something like that, yeah. Uh, so to, to, to obviously to make it double-sided, you have to solder it from the top and the bottom. Mm -hmm. So I had to remove the black, pa the, the black uh, plastic holder bits, um, yes. which is a little bit tricky. But once I got that in, I could just put the headers in to the breadboard and then lay my PCB on top and then basically just solder it in place like that. So that worked out really well. Um, but again, to have that ability to rapidly prototype a, a, a quick change is, is super, super critical. And it's like really nice. Um, and we're using the fume extractor, look at that, the purple one without the googly eyes. With the solder dispenser Adabot head over there. Yeah. Which you kind of, of course, build yeah. as well. <clears throat> now I need to make like a template for a, a DIY solder mask. Mm, and, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe we'll make these. Uh, you can um, go ahead and grab them right you can now. Grab them right actually. now. Check it out. So if you go to the learning site, shout out to Davis Estelles, Estelles who uh, who came up with this concept. He's calling them circuit playground shields. You can kind of make. He actually made his own using kind of your your regular uh, breadboard. Oh, there you go. So he shows you how you did it this way. Mm -hmm. You can kind of make your own with the drilling and stuff. But then he also made some custom PCBs. Um, here's more for like a dip 14 pin layout. A little bit closer here for a two by seven header pin oh, layout. Nice. Here's like with a lot of prototyping holes to expand uh, the hardware. And you also use standoffs to kind of elevate it to have a nice distance mm -hmm. between it. It's so. like a battery right between those. Yeah. A good compact circuit yeah. there. Yeah, and also a uh, shout out to Liz Clark who put together a video. I shared it on the blog last week. Yeah, yes, um, yes. where she got to play with it and, and showcase like mm -hmm. how, uh, how it works and stuff. Very awesome walkthrough yeah. on that. Mm -hmm. It was fun. That's what got me the idea. So thank you guys. Because uh, I really was like, well, can I know that? So when I was prototyping this, I had the alligator clips. Oh my god, that's and they really kept touching, <laughs> which was you know not good for uh, especially with the motor stuff. Yeah, uh, and the, obviously the board as well. You I kept shorting it out. Yeah. So this was uh, definitely handy for me. Uh, yes, we will definitely look at adding this into the store. Yeah. Hey, um, uh, somebody in, in is saying that sadly Vias probably won't work. That's a good. That's uh, uh, a good sort of thing to think about is how do you do vias with this? You could probably use like some really thin enamel wiring, like the magnetic wiring stuff that's really thin. Maybe you can do that, like put it through and solder it on one side and solder it on the bottom. It's a little bit more challenging, definitely, but you, you can, you could probably do vias. Um, I haven't done it yet, but um, being able to do this double-sided board with the header being soldered on the top and the bottom was really the only way to do it. Cause again, it's not through hole plated because it's kind of like your DIY version of it. But, uh, you know, Lamar actually, and, and team, the fab team at Adafruit uses the Bantam tools, the other mills, to create all of our testers. prototype testers, because uh, you can do it right then and there. So that's really cool. So again, just showing how this works. Uh, yeah, of course there's too much light in here. Yeah, there's probably too much light. It's, 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 it's kind of tuned, the threshold is kind of tuned for um, the light, light pipe, pipe yeah. yeah. So it's a little bit, well, it's a little bit sensitive. Can you still buy another Mill Pro? Yes, you can. Um, you have to buy them directly from Bantam Tools. 
so you can do that. There's other uh, ones on the market, but uh, man, the, the, the Bantam Tool software is just, I think it's like un, unmatched with some beat. They really focused on uh, making it easy. Look how good that is. It's pretty good, man. So usually you think of, uh, you know, the interpretive language for this to be like yeah. slow, but. Cool, Blake saying that he built a tune extractor last month for his airbrush station. Sweet. Share, yeah, share it with us. Good. We'd love to share it in the blog. Ouch. <laughs> I just benched myself. Where did you get the claw? I think it's a so 3D printed. printed. Yeah. yeah, 3D printed. So we'll be adjusting this, obviously, so you can have a much more easier way to grip something while it's on the drone. Yeah. As for what we're going to drop from the drone, I'm thinking like water balloons or something. Rubber duckies. Rubber duckies over the pool. Fun things, yeah. not bad things. Yeah, so another comment here um, talking about um, using an, uh, what is it, the X-Carve. Yeah, yeah, see, this is, this is what I'm talking about. The, um, there's like a program on GitHub to auto-level any type of Gerbil uh, router and post-processing the G-code, uh, resulting in a matrix to maintain a distance to the board. Yeah, that's very complicated and kind of hard, and man, the Bantam tools really... Really nailed it, man, when it comes to, what are you doing? Are you hurting yourself? <laughs> yeah, so they did a really good job of getting all of that simplified when importing all of your uh, PCBs, yeah. your river files. It does a really good job. All of your settings are all untuned and optimized mm -hmm. uh, for precise milling. And you do some really detailed milling stuff. Yeah, and yeah. Again, six mil traces with six mil spacing. That's crazy. Um, yeah, pretty cool. So I'll, I'll probably put a guide together on how that process is. Um, yeah, that'll be fun. Moving cool. on to other things. Your shop talking now? Still shop talking, or moving on to shop talk. Yeah, we have like 10 minutes, man. Oh, yeah. quickly uh, shout out to Colin Cunningham and team who are working on the iOS dev apps. We have a really cool Apple TV application we've had for, I want to say a year or two? Yeah, we, got a, we picked up our, a 4K Apple TV mm -hmm. over the weekend. Yeah, it was on sale, so we figured yeah. we'd grab it. Uh, Try it out here. It's going somewhere. Look, we got black tape. Comes with all the things you need. And the star of the show, because Apple decided to put glass on their remote control. Yeah. <laughs> we have this really cool Ninja Flex 3D printed bumper that has saved the other remote yeah, many, many times many from times. dropping. So, so. it's a Ninja Flex. 3D it's printed amazing. bumper for an Apple TV remote. And of course you can get the Apple, or the Adafruit TV app has all of the shows. It's just pulling RSS, I forget from where, and doing some conversion. Uh, mm -hmm. Todd Trace actually worked on the uh, The script, that was like a cron job or something. Hey look, Lamar Phil, our live one. So you can sit show. back on the couch and watch um, all of the Adafruit shows on your couch. If you don't want to stream it, using your phone for something else. Um, and here it is. Super simple design. He made this. Oh yeah, that's the price of plug and play. Yeah, it is, man. The software is, is, is that is what you're what paying for. You're paying for. Yeah, I know. People look at the price of any CNC machine. You're like, what? I know. They're just not. They're, they got to be built pretty tough, man. Yeah, that's the price for anything vibrations. that's expensive. That's what you're paying for the the fit and finish and all that cool stuff on there. That actually makes it an enjoyable experience. Yeah. So yeah, a simple Ninja Flex bumper here it just slides right in, so you won't break the. Apple TV remote. Hey, it the works with both there. types of Apple TV remotes, like the older one and the newer one. Mm -hmm. so, is that what we're trying to get at here? Yeah, yeah. That yeah. it's the same dimension. So it's well, nice. it's really plugging the uh, Apple TV app. You guys want to check that out? Have oh, an yeah. easier way to watch. John's like, video, uh, video sure has come a long way since the days of an antenna. <laughs> yeah, we were there in those days. Yeah, it's actually about another one just so we could uh, be less dependent on cable stuff. Right. But yeah. So the job, the Very lanyard cool. goes right through Yeah, it's there. on Thingiverse, guys. Go check it out yep. um, real quick. We'll run through it. Quite a few people have made it. Shout out to the folks who posted to make of making theirs, uh, presenting at NinjaFlex. Um, so check it out. If, it's, if you still something you want to 3D print NinjaFlex, always yeah, making bumpers. Pretty much required for okay. a glass object that is easily dropped in the living room. All right, let's get, kind of run through some stuff. This week's Time Lapse Tuesday, we got to run through it really quick. Here it is, really there's cool, the video. customizable keyboard. This is I cool. I call it a yeah. tool holder now, so that's what I'm using it for. What was but it supposed to be used for? Pen holder. Oh. 
Really cool job by an awesome designer maker in Spain. There's a lot of cool Arduino, 3D printing design stuff. Check out his Thingiverse page. Mm -hmm. And you have the ability to customize this. It, he did make it customize your app for this. You can yeah, actually awesome. add uh, whatever letters you want in there. They have like, he, or he has a, a QWERTY layout. Um, uh, what is it, Dvorak layout? Dvorak, huh? Yeah. Like John Dvorak? Let's see the other one. Astro. Yeah. Cole Mac and Moltron. Yeah. I've never heard of those. No those supports are cool, required for that. He's even made check it, it out. Check out that. That's that's super cool. That. You can make it smaller, bigger, as many make rows like, uh, as, as you want. Cap from it. Great use of the open SCAD and the customizer. Mm -hmm. So huge, awesome, awesome design. Make your own, check guys. Check out his designs. He has a bunch yeah. of really good designs. Start following. Yeah, Fernando. Shout out to Fernando. Juarez. Give them a follow. Check cool. out some designs. Maker, teacher, designer. Yeah. Very cool. Love it. All right, it's if you need uh, some. Think of it. It's down. No designs found. What are you talking about? It's got tons of designs. Are you kidding me? Anyway, we got the link in the description if you want to download this. And you can also check out the Time Ups Tuesday video that we did, uh, check which it out. we just showed. All right, Miles. moving on. Got to give a shout out announcing the Pin Shape contest winners for the video game the game design contest challenge thing. Honorable mentions, Overwatch Tracer, Pulse Gun um, by Ivan. We got a working chest of Sauro, 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 Sauro Water feature by uh, Martin. Very cool, uh, very cool um, sculptures. Here's a really cool one. Third place gets, um, third place goes to the Gravity Gun from Half-Life 2 by Lebo Schmitz. You get a $50 Adafruit gift card. Second place, Legend of Zelda, the Zora's Link, uh, Zora Lynx guitar. That's crazy, by Inhuman Species. He's the winner of a Whitbox Go 3D printer. And for first place, goes to R. Prosa, making a Fortnite battle bus. The popular game Fortnite, making the rounds, and he gets to win a a Robo 3D R2 printer and a $100 ADP gift card. So congratulations to all the winners. Uh, there's more contests going on with Pinshape, so be sure to um, subscribe to Pinshape's Twitters and YouTubes and all that stuff. I don't, I don't know if they have YouTube, I just said that. Uh, but here's the blog post and shout out to all the winners again. Very cool, that was fun. Okay, moving on to Community Makes. We got like four minutes, see if we can run through these. Shout out to everybody who's posting makes on Thingiverse in the Discord chat room. Let's quickly run through these. We got a uh, CNC. Hey, remember the CNC Raspberry Pi? Remember the case that I CNC'd for the Raspberry Pi 3? Somebody 3D printed it. Hey, that turned out perfect. No, that actually wow. looks nice. I guess you don't have the CNC yet. It's great. It's a nice, cool. nice, uh, nice color combo. Uh, Octoprint touch display. Um, it just holder. printed the stand, but hey, that's a good stand. Check it out if you're looking for a stand. It's a good stand design. Shout out to Tom on uh, Twitter who printed your iPhone X design using Filamentum's Filiflex 92A metallic silver. That looks really good. These these look amazing. These, look, these are really great. Wow, very yeah. nice. Did you print yours in Ninjaflex? Yeah, uh, right? I did. Yeah, Tom yeah. also printed the uh, in the PLA version. Yeah, the matte fiber from Pardo Pasta. Good. One of our favorite filament companies, ProPasta. Wow. You can barely see the layer lines because it's a matte fiber finish. Wow. Looks really nice. Holy crap. Yeah, for the iPhone X. Perfect it's fit. The bumper protection. It's nice protection. when you design something that's so proficient fit and it works for someone else. That's just amazing. It's like, how is that possible? Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. teleporting, man. Yeah. It's crazy. A shout out to Matt, Matt Arnold on oh, Twitter. LED who, Santoy. Who builds your LED Santoy with a collaboration with Phil B. Yeah, it was his idea to Very do fun. the wobbly -ness. Yeah, Matt also uh, remixed the design. Um, he had a lot of wires and stuff, like thicker wires than your build. Oh. So he hollowed out the bottom part and it still wow. wobbles. And instead of having the weight well, I there. I thought I would need the weight. Yeah, yeah he cool. actually, he has, a, he has a thing, so you can check it out. I have it linked down in the description. It's super cool. But uh, he talks about it. And he's going to do a guide, I think, too. Like, just to kind of, just to show his build. Because nice. he did a little bit extra. Very cool. Check out um, Discord for some show and tell stuff there as well. And um, we're hanging out there. Yeah, 
let us know at us. Mm -hmm. Quick question there from Azure Skies asking if we have the ability to 3D print something that's two feet long. I think I've printed something pretty big that's two feet long. It yeah, was right. like a, a tower, a castle mm -hmm. tower. It was mm -hmm. like this big. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I printed it in pieces and then I used a coil to screw it. There's like these giant coils. Yeah. It was like this big of a diameter too. It's huge. It's huge, yeah. yeah. You, you've seen it so before maybe on... Yeah, you'd have to my... piece together. Um, the biggest we've printed diagonally, I believe, was 600 millimeters long. Yeah. Is that the the needle from that Either cosplay? The needle the fire shot the, cosplay? Um, it's called the Guardian Sword. Yeah. Uh, let's see what else. Kitten Carnival loves the Dvorak keyboard layout. Yeah. <laughs> Kirby is asking if we have any top secret Ultimaker news. Oh yeah, There's we something cool don't. coming. Wow, we we're saw, not allowed. We to saw talk what it looks like. It. Holy moly! Yeah, we're not allowed to say. We're, we can't All confirm nor deny that we, we gotta make more space for stuff. Could you show the Bluetooth gamepad, please? Yeah, sorry, I, I neglected to answer that. Which one? I have too many of them. We're ready. We have like a minute, so. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah. Rate, rate which one you want to see, and we'll talk about mm. it next week. <laughs> so we are working on a Bluetooth stack, or K-Town, right? Yeah. We're working on a Bluetooth stack for... for Circuit Python. Python, yep. Yeah, so, so it'll be a lot easier to program. Yeah, so that's when all we can talk about this again, because you know, the easy key, the supplier issues, so we can't make those anymore. Yeah. Um, that was the easiest way to make a Bluetooth project. Right, and the name, easy key. Yeah, yeah. It, was it wasn't thing. easy to get the, the chips. <laughs> Time to get another shelving unit. Yeah, it's actually right behind the computer, Kirby. Yeah. We got it ready. So, yeah, don't, don't worry. Bluetooth projects will be back as soon as uh, K-Town gets that stack. Uh, all nice, bug-free and going. I believe he is uh, traveling around to one of our other developers in Japan or Spain to get some I heard there's a new Ultimaker. Did you hear about the new Ultimaker? <laughs> I think everybody did. Oh, my God. It's going to have... It looks oh, it's cool, cool, man. It's cool, man. <laughs> uh, let's see. I think that's going to be it for this yeah, show. Thank yeah. you all for joining us every week. I had more jokes for this. You know you're doing it wrong when your fume extractor starts talking to you. <laughs> you know you're soldering wrong when it smells like burnt chicken. <laughs> all right, that's all I got. Don't know. forget to uh, support us. Yeah, don't forget the shrimp team. And all of your orders go directly to... Uh, this is where all the money's the going. Folks, it's not going to any investors or nope. any venture capitalists. Nope. We are debt-free, loan-free. And this we can only do this because of your orders. Yep. So just let you know, guys. Buy a kit once in a while. Don't forget, print core, 10% off. Mm -hmm. Also, we got some great shows coming on tonight. If you want to show off your projects and what you're working on, you can let Lamar and Phil know, and the rest of the world, we'll be on there. Show and Tell. Wednesday, tonight. Every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. And right after that, it'll be Ask an Engineer, a whole hour of Lamar Phil. New products. Over new products, top secret stuff. And of course, all the news that's happening in the DIY mm -hmm. bubble industry. Yeah, bubble industry. Super cool. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Again, we do the show every Wednesday at 11, uh, 11 a.m. Mm -hmm. Eastern time. Maybe we should do it at 11 p.m. Hey, oh, don't forget tomorrow also John Park's workshop. We'll yep. be working on some really cool 4 o'clock cool p.m. Sense. Eastern time. We'll be hanging out in the chat room there yeah. as well as the Discord. And if, oh yeah, another shout out also to the Circuit Python weekly meeting. Happens every Tuesday, every Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern time where you can tune in and listen to Scott and team talk about what All they're the working on with Circuit stuff Python. On the cool things that are coming up. Uh, definitely tune in to, this, uh, to tonight's show and tell. The uh, CircuitPython team is in the office. I want to see that cake. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I got cake. some yummy cake over there. Yeah. Print core is the coupon code, John. Be sure to use that. Print core. Yes. It's going to pick up some perma proto boards. Awesome. Well, thank you guys right. so much again. Hope we see you tonight on the show and tell. We'll see you tonight and next week. Stay but until then. for Moment of Fail. Yeah, don't stay tuned. Don't forget, moment to fail. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next week. Don't forget to make a great day. <laughs>